Hey, this is Joe from 718 Cyclery and Outdoors here in Brooklyn, New York with another video in our bike touring series. Today I'm going to talk about how I pack for our tours and our micro tours. Uh, just a little bit of background. Our micro tours are one or two night self-supported bike camping events. Our tours tend to be five and six days long. There's a lot of similarities between how I'll pack my bike. Now we go on about 15 to 20 trips a year, so I'm not actually unpacking and repacking endlessly. Um, it's basically editing what I have and when I came back and editing down new stuff in, stuff I didn't use out, that kind of thing. On this video, uh, you can think about it in two ways. One is, uh, you know, what to pack, and then one is how to pack. And this video is kind of like how I pack for our tours and micro tours. And when I think about that, what I want to do, one of my, my concepts personally, is like I'd rather fewer bags and fewer things all over the bike. I'd rather... Um, to know where things are. So the way I kind of divide it up is fork bags, you know, frame fork bags, uh, frame bags, and then um, a saddle bag. And that's the three ways that I kind of delineate out how I'm packing and where things are. It's very important on, uh, on trips to know where things are, first aid kit, tools, things that people need if you're leading a group. So for me, it's very critical to have a system and to understand where things are. On multi-day trips, it becomes even more important because you're packing and unpacking day in and day out over a week. So it becomes very critical to have a system to understand where things are because uh, you don't want to be digging through stuff on the side of the road looking for that first aid kit. So with that being said, uh, I'll ask you to subscribe to the channel. I'll ask you to hit the notification bell thing. Um, but this is a, a labor of love. Love doing these things and love talking to folks around bike camping. So with that being said, we're going to jump right into uh, my bike and show you how I'm set up for our most uh, current micro tour, which is happening in a few days. And also, in addition, at the end of this video, I'll show you a bunch of little tricks and tips that I use and I picked up over the years. We've been doing about 10 to 15 trips a year since 2014, so I've led a lot of bike camping trips, I've learned a lot. Um, and what I want to do at the end of the video is show you some of the little tips and tricks that I use that I've learned over the years with some great riders and some great friends. Okay, so here we're gonna do, we're gonna start from the front of the bike and work our way backwards. And again, these are the fork bags that I described. Um, what I like to do here is I like to have um, sleeping bag, a sleeping system, so sleeping bag, sleeping pad, um, pillow. On the other side, I'll have my tent and then a series of clothes. So what happens here is during the year, for most of the year, during the warm weather months, these will both be 10 liter bags. Uh, as we move into the colder months, right now we're in October, getting ready for November, it's gonna be a little chilly in our next micro tour. So what then starts to happen is I'll use a 15 liter bag back and forth because the big thing with me that kind of changes um, from warm weather to cold weather, and this is for everyone really, is that you start to, you have to pack more clothes, right? So that's what jumping from a 10 liter to a 15 liter bag during our colder month trips, that's what that allows us to do. So, you know, I use uh, King Cage uh, titanium cages on the fork, hard to see, there you go right there. Vole straps, of course. I've also used these uh, Astur manufacturing straps as like a, a secondary device to really suture things down. Um, I also like to weigh these bags and you'll see a picture here in a second. There we go, of my weigh-ins. I like to weigh things during the week, just so I understand if there's any discrepancies left and right. I try to keep them between, you know, 10% of each other. But again, once I get to camp, what happens is both of these get jettisoned off onto the ground. I start digging through to set my tent and sleeping bag up. And then what you're left with is two dry bags, essentially. So if it's going to rain overnight, I have a lot of uh, kind of built-in waterproof storage with uh, these, um, these particular bags. These are from Outdoor Research. And one thing I really like to make sure is when I do install these or put them on and off, you really want to make sure you got the straps squared away. Like this guy hanging down, no bueno. So I'll probably take care of that and wrap that up. But you really want to try to not have straps dangling and hanging everywhere just because it can get into the wheel, can cause some damage. So that's kind of the concept of what I'm doing up front with my fork bags. All right, moving to the middle of the bike. While we're here, real briefly, I'll talk about my water bottle situation. I like to go with three, and what I do is I just use these two primarily. In my mind, I just tell myself that I have two water bottles. I cycle through them, I keep them refilled. 
This guy down below, which gets nice and nice and dirty, is kind of the do not drink in case of emergency, you know, uh, if we're running low on water. So what this does is that if I am starting to drink from this particular water bottle, um, that to me tells me that I am low on water and I have to kind of deal. But moving up a little bit, what we'll do with frame bags is I like to use the Ovea Negra a half frame bag. This is a large size. And then in addition to that, on the frame bags, I like to use two uh, sturdy bag feed bags. So in the frame bag, what I usually have are long things, things that are articulated. Let's see if I can even open this right now because it's nice and jammed. Hard to see in, but what you're going to see in here is my cooking kit towards the back because it's cylindrical. fits in there great. And then moving towards the front, I have my tent poles, my tent stakes. I have my camp chair, you know, the collapsible pieces of the camp chair. I have my click stand. So things that are longer tend to kind of be in this frame bag. It's about four and a half liters, so not a ton of space, but that's not really what I use it for. Now, we get a lot of questions about full frame bags. And for me, I like the half frame bag because it allows me to use my water bottles. What I've also done, if you look really closely, I've used these BRAD brackets, these black brackets here, here, and here. And what that does is I'm able to install those and move your water bottles down, right? Generally, water bottles are going to be up and kind of in the way of these frame bags. But what I do is I try to move my water bottles down as far as I can. That gives me enough clearance across the top. Okay, moving into sturdy bag feed bags left and right. This guy here, um, this is going to be snacks, stuff like that. Um, electrolyte tablets, goo, snacks, all those things that we think we need on rides in there. Over here, just kind of a little bit more of a miscellaneous, but I use a pedal cell. So the junction box of the pedal cell is in there and a few other kind of doodads that I'll talk to you about at the end of the video. Uh, I'll talk to you about some of my uh, the kind of secret tips that I use. Okay, moving towards the back of the bike, you'll see I have a bigger saddlebag. And this rack, this Erlen rack from, um, from Oceanside, uh, cycles out in California. This thing's amazing. Um, so it's a rack that really kind of sandwiches in between the seat post clamp. It just goes down to stainless steel. It's just an elegant kind of ring of a, of a rack. Um, it's rated for about 15 pounds. I always weigh this bag before we go. I'm usually at about 10 or 11. So what this bag is, this is a first generation Swift Zeitgeist bag. And what I'll have in here, a um, little bit of a mess right now, because I'm in the middle of packing and unpacking, but back here, what I'll have is my fire kit. I'll have, um, you know, personal hygiene stuff. And then what I have, the, you know, a couple extra things, an extra dry bag here. I'll have uh, my, my knife. Um, what I'll also have is what I call the big three back here, which is first aid, under here, tools, and over here, straps, right? Those are the things that, um, what I call the junk drawer, right? This is when people break things, uh, have all the bolts and Volet straps and things like that to take care of it. So that's what the rear of this is for. This is like the trunk of a car. Now, a lot of people use the saddlebags that come out a little further or that articulate out a bunch. And we have some great vendors that make some great bags. But I always find that with those bags, I have to unpack everything in order to kind of uh, get to the things I need. You know, with this thing here, it's nice as it kind of opens and closes as almost like a car trunk, right? So you're really able to get in there and get what you need. All right, so those are the, um, let me get back out here. So two of my little tricks are gonna happen right here at my front sturdy bag. One is I always keep a clean um, handkerchief. Um, this is an Ovea Negra one, super cool. But I always keep a clean handkerchief right nearby and this is for you know, getting sweat in your eyes and all kinds of stuff, and you have stuff on your hands, maybe you change someone's flat tire. So it's really nice to have something clean that you can wipe your eyes out with, um, that kind of thing. So that's what this is. And then in addition, I, I do have a full tool case and a tool, tool set in the back, but I always chuck this little guy up here. It's a Schwabby one. It's really nice. It has a valve um, extractor. I just kind of chuck that right there because so many times on trips, you're pulling over to the side of the road and someone's like, hey, does anyone have a an Allen wrench to adjust a saddle or something. So instead of really digging through my bike, um, what I like to do is just have that little guy kind of right there. Uh, for some more little tidbits and tricks, again, on the other side of my sturdy bag, here I'm gonna have a pen, a journal uh, for notes, a uh, contact list, uh, analog version, but wrapped in a, um, um, a plastic bag just in case of rain. And over here, I always like to have an air checker um, for checking pressures of tires and stuff because uh, invariably, we're changing tires for folks, 
and I want to make sure that uh, you know we're getting them to pressure and get them as they needed. So that's another little tidbit or a little trick that I use on the bike. So up here at the cockpit, I got a few things going on here. I got my Wahoo. Sometimes it's a Garmin, sometimes it's a Wahoo. Um, my light. Um, phone mount here, I use the quad lock phone mount, so the phone will sit right there, right in front of the Wahoo, which is great. And then of course I got my spur cycle bell. And then coming around to the front of this, this um, these lights are bright. This Wahoo mount also has a GoPro mount in the front, right? So I can have a GoPro kind of coming out of the front. So that's basically the cockpit setup. Uh, I talked about this earlier, but again, this is the water bottle trick, right? Where I'm trying to get the water bottles down. And again, here's the B-Rad system where it's just a bracket that just installs to the existing water bottle cage uh, mounts. And the whole thing can just slide down. So you're sliding all your stuff out of the way and getting some clearance underneath your frame bag. Other things that you can do, um, if this didn't work for you in terms of water bottle clearance, I've seen people use a side mount water bottle cage where you just kind of pop in the bottle out to the side so you're not dealing with clearance issues. But in my experience, you just get used to it. You get used to how this kind of mechanism works with the underside of what goes on there with the frame bag. So what's going on on the, on the back of this bag here? I'm not much of a dangle packer. I don't like to dangle stuff too much. But here I am dangling stuff. I always bring a lock. This is a hip lock. Um, you know, pretty lightweight lock, but it's um, kind of a convenience lock. Certainly way better than nothing. I always kind of have that on the bike. Safety pizza, of course... Um, got a real good connection to the gentleman who invented this. He was a former employee, so I always kind of carry one. And this guy here, although it's kind of dangling down, it's just more reflector, but it's actually a carabiner that can be used for other things, right? So I just kind of keep that there um, just so I have those things. And again, I know exactly where they are on the bike. Where they are on the bike. I just dropped the phone. And finally, for my last little tip that I'll tell you about, in my Zeitgeist bag in the back, there are two pockets on either side. I'm very specific about what goes in there and about understanding what goes in there. I don't just throw anything in there. On this side, I have things regarding the weatherproofing of my phone in terms of if it gets wet. There's this is like a waterproof case for it. I also have my headlamp, right? So that's very specific. On that side, that's always so when I get to camp, I know where my headlamp is right away. Just a real specific thing. On the other side, in the other bag, or in the other pocket, not in here right now, but it's going to be there is my wallet. Um, I've lost my wallet a couple times over the years, and it's nothing more annoying than that. So it's this is it. This is where the wallet goes every single time. So I have to kind of condition myself to keep kind of doing that. But again, this goes back to having a system so you don't have too many variables flying around your head. You kind of know where things are. So there you have it. Um, that's kind of my methodology for how I pack my bike. And again, it helps me to really understand where things are and um, you know, keeps the ride safer because I know where things are very quickly. And it also keeps me organized. Uh, a lot of times on trips when you have newer folks, um, there's just a million variables and they're all over the place. So to kind of uh, get things consolidated down um, really helps in terms of uh, you know, new riders' stress, uh, stress levels, essentially. Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribing and liking the channel always helps us a ton. And I hope to see you out on the road. Thank you.